Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow like a flower. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to organize your files and folders in general. Actually, that sounds a bit boring. Let's go with something like the best file organizing system in the world ever. Let's go with that. And if you have a better way of organizing files than what I'm going to be doing in this video, please do let me know down in the comments because I'd like to use it. That would be great. So why is organizing files and folders important? Well, one reason is if you work in a team and you work and share uh, files and you work on different projects together, it's very important that your colleagues can easily find files that they need to work on. And if you work alone, if you're a freelancer or whatever, running a business, it's always handy to be able to find that file when you need to, especially when you work with loads and loads of clients or you just have loads of projects going on and you need to find something really quickly. So it's just generally good practice to organize your files. And what I'm going to show you today is something that I actually learned in my first job. They had a very good filing system, so I was able to find files uh, as soon as I started the job, really. And it's something that I've developed over my 10 years in the industry. I've taken it to every job that I've worked at, and I now use it still in my freelance business. And uh, I've evolved it a little bit. But generally, it's very similar to the original one. And it's fantastic. I never have any problems. So let's jump into it, OK? So we've got a client. And we're going to create a folder for that client. So let's call him John John Smith. John Smith. That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? We can do better than that. OK, we'll call him Conway Mustafa Gaza. There we go. So Conway Mustafa Gaza is our client. He's our business. So inside that folder, we'll then create another folder. This is going to represent what the project is. So it could be a logo, it could be a poster, Wesbyte, let's try that again, website. Okay, so it's a website. And then inside that folder, what we're going to do is we're going to create separate folders for all of the different elements that make up our project. So for example, the main files, whether you design your websites in Photoshop, Illustrator or Adobe XD, whatever it is, we're going to create a folder for that. So for me, I create a lot of my site designs in Photoshop. So I'm going to go with Photoshop. Any site designs, whether it's home pages, contact pages, whatever, they will be listed in this Photoshop folder. And that's where the PSD files will go. The next one we're going to create is it's going to be a links folder. Now, depending on the program you use in the previous step, this may or may not be relevant. For example, if you use InDesign or you're designing something in InDesign, InDesign uses linked images. So if you have photography, uh, vector art or assets or whatever it is that you're going to use within your InDesign document, you want to store these all in a links folder. The reason being that it's good to have them all in one place and link them to that InDesign document because if you have them scattered all over the place and you create that InDesign document, link everything up and then you start moving or renaming those files, it's going to be a real pain because your InDesign document is going to go, hang on, I can't find all of those files. So it's generally good practice, I think, to put them all in one place to start with before you even begin the project. Then you can all link them to that one location nice and easy. Now another folder. I like to add is a prep, a short for preparation. So any kind of icons or things that I create, maybe it's a graphic, uh, maybe it's just some ideas, I'm experimenting with different font types, any kind of preparation work that is related to the file designs, I will put in the prep folder. So it could even be uh, version one, two, and three that the client rejected even though version 4 was the one they kept, I'll keep those three versions. And you can hang on to those indefinitely, just if you'd like to reference them. Or version 1 might have been your favourite design in the whole world ever, but your client went for version 4. So you might want to keep version 1 in a prep folder, just so you've, you know, you've got your baby, the one that you love. You can use that in your portfolio as well. Or what you can do is delete your prep folder entirely once the whole job is completed. And it just saves on things like disk space. Now another folder is the reference folder. So what this is, is this is everything supplied by your client. So whether it's a brief, whether it's uh, some images that they said, oh, I really like these images, you can just dump it in there if it's initial ideas, um, anything else that you're going to be referencing throughout the project. So that's why it's called reference. It's just kind of 
a place for you to put useful stuff that might be relevant. So if they say they like a logo, they like this, they like that, can you style it in a similar way to this? Whatever it is they're giving you, it's always good to just have it in like a reference folder, just so you've got it there if you need it. Okay, so the next one is output. You can also call this supplied. In fact, you can call it whatever you like, actually. It's your filing system. Um, output is generally what I'm giving the client, the actual files. So for example, if it's print ready artwork, so a print ready PDF that I'm exporting with crop marks and bleed and all that stuff, I would put it in the output. This is the final product that I'm supplying to the client. If it was a logo, I would maybe take the logo and supply it in a number of different formats. So we'd have AI, we'd have EPS, we'd have PNG, JPEG, SVG, whatever I'm supplying that logo in, all of that will go in the output. And I normally group it together as well, uh, just inside a zip folder. And then that folder is what I will send to the client. And I just keep a copy in the output folder, just so I know that if I need to reference it, I can see that, okay, this is exactly what I sent the client. And I also like to date the zip folder as well. So if I sent it today, it would be the 9th of February 2017. I just add that date into the file name just for my personal reference. So I know that on that date, I sent them this file. Uh, those are the main ones that I like to use. Uh, I don't think there are any more, but we can go inside them now. There's nothing in there. And let's just jump inside Photoshop and we'll create another folder. Imagine this is a file actually. So pretend that this is not a folder, this is a file. Now the way that I like to name my files personally is we start with the client name. I've got to remember what I wrote now. So what was it? Conway Mustafa Ghazi, something like that. So remember, pretend this isn't a folder. This is a Photoshop PSD file. So we've got the file there. Next, what I would do after the client name is do an underscore or a dash. It doesn't really matter. Or you could just do a space, but I like to go with an underscore. And then what we'll type in is website. So we've got the client, then we've got what the actual project is. So we're kind of retracing the files that we've already created. And for example, this PSD folder might be a homepage. And we'll just pop PSD on the end there. Yes, I want to add that. Okay, so then what we might do is once that design's done, let's add another one. And this is going to be a contact page. And we'll add another one. Okay, let's have this as a testimonials page. So you can see that all of these files, oh wow, it's even added the icon, perfect. So all of these files now have a very clear naming system. So we've got the client at the beginning, we've got what the project actually is, then we have what the page is. And sometimes as well, you can even add the size if it's relevant. So if I was doing like a banner, for example, or some print artwork, I could type A4 if it was on A4 paper, or I could type in the size and then just put PX, which is short for pixels. So if you're doing lots of different banners, you've got five different banners that you're designing, you can actually add the pixel dimension into the file name. So it just helps you remember exactly what size they are. Let's just extend this out a little bit. So let's do a quick recap. We have the client or business name folder here. We have the project name. So whether it's a poster, website, logo design, that goes there. We have any linked images that link to the master design files. We have the output folder. So that is anything that you're sending to your client. These are the final deliverables here. We have the Photoshop files, or if it's Illustrator, InDesign, XD, your master design files go in here. We have the prep folder, which is anything related to preparation. So it might be vector artwork, it might be font exploration, initial ideas and concepts, they go in there. And reference, which is anything supplied by your client. So ideas, indications of styles they like, briefs, whatever it might be that you'll be using as a useful reference when working on the project. So that can go in there. So if we go inside the Photoshop folder, we have the client name to start with, followed by an underscore, followed by what the project is, followed by another underscore, followed by the page type in this case, or it might be a poster, whatever the actual artwork is specifically. And then we have the size at the end, if you want to add that. So if you're doing lots of banners, it's very helpful to give each of these a different size. 
and add that to the file name just so you can quickly reference when you're scanning down the list of files. And there we go, that's how to organize files and folders in general. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time. I hope that was helpful guys. Um, if you do have a better way of doing it, as I said at the beginning of the video, please do let me know down in the comments. It would be great to steal, I mean, borrow your idea. That, that, that would be awesome. <laughs>